Good morning. Thank you for joining us for session 12. What are we doing today? Brick blasting. What are we using? A CNC auto blaster right here. So today you are going to be the first to see this in action live. So I want you to tell me where you're tuning in from. I want you to send me questions that you have and I'll get to them, I promise. Um, what, we are on 12 weeks of training, all right? So you've caused me to stretch myself of what can we do for you. We have 12 weeks and today we are out in our warehouse. Okay, so normally we are filming from our studio, a workshop, and today we've brought our CNC, we set it up for you and we're out in our warehouse. So we're doing brick blasting and I'm going to be learning with you how to operate this machine. We have a special guest, an expert in the monument field, and he's back by popular demand. Okay, so back by popular demand, I've heard you, you've sent me emails, you sent us posts, and we have brought on Josh Willis to talk about monuments, but brick blasting. So here we are, here's Josh. Morning, Liz, how Good are morning. we doing today? Good, so um, this is like a, seems like a pretty high tech machine here. It could look intimidating, but it's actually really simple to use and it's, okay. it's really easy, but it's very efficient and productive. Okay, That's now what it is. I don't see a blasting cabinet and that makes me nervous because see, I'm used to blasting inside a cabinet. You know, I'm gonna wear my gloves if I have my nails done. I'm going to turn on my system, have my dust filtration work and blast the bricks one by one. We but are gonna be using an open aired system today. And this is gonna show you just how efficient the machine is uh, that we can work at it in the open. You can put it in your warehouse or in your shop uh, in the open air and you're gonna see just how efficient and clean this is compared to a traditional cabinet. Okay, no cabinet. No cabinet. So do we need to wear uh, safety gear? We when should. We're Whenever you're doing anything, any kind of outdoor blasting or any kind of machine blasting, you should have a respirator and glasses on. Um, today, we're just gonna show you how it's working okay. so we're not in a production setting, so we'll be okay. Uh, okay. But we do recommend that when you're using the machine, you have a respirator and some glasses on. All right. So. Um, we are doing, let's see here, we have one, two, three, four, five, ten bricks. Six. Six. You're right, five, ten. Ten. We're doing All right, ten can bricks. we count? <laughs> we can't count. We're going to do ten bricks okay. at one time. Um, and then we're going to show, now normally what you could do if you were doing a headstone, you right. could have different programs. Uh, you can have up to ten programs in one, uh, in, or ten fields in one program. Today we're just going to do one big field and blast them all at one time. Okay, so 10 bricks. Now I've heard that you can actually even do these bricks about, it could be almost 30 seconds per brick. Right, I bet you today we're gonna end up right around 30 to 35 seconds per brick for the depth Are that we want. Are you kidding me, 30 yeah. seconds. I mean, think about that, 30 seconds per brick. Because I, I think for me, it's between two and five minutes per brick depending on the type of brick it is. It all depends on the brick you're using. We're gonna be using a mortar brick um, which is just mortar. Uh, if you do a clay brick, those blast really yes. fast. Uh, if we got into a granite paver uh, or a concrete brick, those are gonna take just a little bit longer if they have aggregate or if they're actual hard concrete. So it depends on the brick that, or the paver that you're using. But today we've done some samples and we know this brick's gonna take right around 30 seconds to blast. Okay, now I love the frame. This, this is such a great idea. Tell me about this Okay, so the frame serves two purposes. Um, the first purpose is we want to keep all the bricks contained so that we can blast multiple bricks at one time. Uh, the other thing the frame does, if you'll notice, we put some, some um, two by fours around here right. or that we cut down. When the machine's blasting, that vacuum covers a, about a four and a half inch area. Okay. So if you're coming right up to the edge of the brick like we are, those bristles are going to hang over and that's going to allow sand to come down and it's going to get everywhere and make a mess. So what we do is we just put in just a little, uh, a little board here so that when the machine comes over, it still maintains its suction. So having the board here, the vacuum is able to capture that sand and suck it, it back up. Yeah, it still can extract all of the dust and good abrasive because it does go back and recycle. Okay which right. I'll show you later when we go through the machine how that works. So bricks, and you, I can feel they're a little warm. They are warm, we heated them up with a torch. Uh, anytime uh, I do a, a unpolished surface, mm -hmm. I like to get that surface hot, whether it's a river rock or a brick 
right. or a honed, unpolished uh, piece of granite. I like to get it hot up. because the mask will really adhere better. Yes. And what are we using today when it comes to resist? We're using the SR2000 okay. 9mm. Okay. And we told our custom mask department to just put a little extra tack on it for us. All right. So 9mm SR2000. Now, traditionally, I'll tell you to use, if you're doing a surface etch on bricks, we can use a 5mm SR2000 with a spray glue or brush on adhesive. Six mil if you're going to go deep for hand blasting. Can Why do we use nine today? We're using nine because I think we're going to go. We're using a very coarse abrasive. Remember, the coarser the abrasive, the faster it's going to blast. But the coarser the abrasive, the harder it's going to heat up that mask. Right. So what we did, we went with the nine mil because we're going to be blasting with an 80 grit garnet today. An 80 grit garnet. Are you sure? My 9 mil is going to hold up to an 80 grit garnet. It's going to hold up to 80 grit. <laughs> and if you notice, we got some bricks that have a little bit yeah, of detail in there. I know. I so see that. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the pressure down just a little bit. Okay. Um, we're going to be blasting right around 30, 35 pounds of pressure. Uh, and you'll see that we'll probably get this done in one pass. Okay. All right, so do you want to start to heat up these bricks so we can get these blasted? Absolutely. We'll get them blasted and then we'll go through the machine. All right. So what I'm going to do is, again, I just want to just warm them up. Uh, we're not flame finishing them or altering the surface, so there's no need for protective equipment there. Because um, typically, if you were flaming granite, you yeah, would wear goggles. You have to, yeah. Yes. And you're using a much bigger torch. Right. We're just using a little soldering torch just to break the chill and get the stone warm. Right. And you always want to use safety. Don't have cans of paint around. Um, be careful of what you have in your environment when you're using a torch. I always pull my hair back. You wear, you know, don't wear long sleeves, like they have ruffles. Yep. Okay, so what we've done is we've made the, the stencil ju uh, just slightly larger than the brick, so it's easy to line up. The other reason I like that is because what it does is it allows me to make sure that I have a small gap here. I'm making sure that I have a good overlap. So when we blast, everything is nice and tight. And then what I'm gonna do is just the liner off okay we're not going to tape anything off and these bricks uh some of them are like uh memorial bricks and some of them are would be like a donor recognition brick this one here is just commemorating when uh, these two got married um everyone's a little bit different i think you've got me with uh, no cabinet because well, you're going to see it. It's, on it's the um, On the plaque on the auto blaster, it says dustless. So I'm like, dustless and no cabinet. It does a great job extracting. And then we're using garnet today. So, you know, you're pulling me out of my comfort zone because <laughs> traditionally I like to, you know, maybe 120, 100 grit would be the coarsest I go. But today we're using 80 grit garnet. So, so on this machine, Liz, the coarser the grit, the better. And the reason being is if you have too fine of a grit in there, What's going to happen is a lot of it's going to get sucked up into your dust collector and um, and you don't want that to happen. So the heavier the grit or coarser the grit, the better it would be. Now I'm also just to make sure that everything is down. I'll help you squeegee. Actually, you're just doing good with the roller there. I see that. Okay, the roller so looks really good. Really good. I stole this from your classroom. Okay. Oh, that looks familiar. Yep. So it's going to be missing probably when you items here okay all so right. I'm gonna take all that out of the way um, give that to you and what we'll do is I'll show you how we just turn the machine on okay. and then we'll go ahead and and, uh, and program this all right are you ready to see this let's take a look at where when, when you set this up here we got Ron joining us we got Ontario John from Ontario we have Debbie uh, from Montana welcome Debbie uh, uh, you get a lot of people Ron from Florida Ron and Gail hi how are you and we have stones and sand, Jim. And let's see here. We have Terry, Nancy, John. We have Matias from Abrasive Imaging. We have Luis from Peru. They're saying you coordinated your nails to match the machine. Oh, you know what? I didn't even think about that. That's pretty funny. <laughs> you know, and I, I didn't get to wear a dress today. I had to wear jeans because we're in, the, we're in the warehouse. And I have a closed toe shoe. So safety. Safety. Safety first. safety first. Always safety first. We have Lee joining us and Jim. So thank you guys for tuning in today. So and before we before we actually blast them, let's just show you how to turn the machine on. Um, it's real simple. Um, this is going to require a good size air compressor. 
Okay, but what about power? Because see, I'm looking at all of this and I'm thinking, how much power does someone need to have to operate this? On our big box blaster, which we have, our okay. big monument style blasters, we're running 480 and 220 volt. Okay. 220 volt for the cabinet and 480 for the dust collector. So you have a big auto, auto blaster, a large one. We do. Okay, that's a lot of power. A lot of power. This machine uses 110. No way. Yeah. 110. Plug it in the wall. 110. All right. So are you serious? This little plug right here is going to operate this machine. The whole thing. And it's plugged right into the wall here. We're going to recommend a 15 amp circuit, but we're using amps. 110 power. I mean, there are some small kilns that don't even take uh, 15 amps. No, this is a very, very energy efficient machine. Uh, and it's going to surprise you when you see it in operation. Wow. So, however, the one thing it does consume is a lot of air. Okay. So like a typical, our typical um, award shops, they might have a two and a half or five horse right. air compressor. This one, you're going to want to be in that 10 horse area. You need 24 CFM at 90 PSI. Okay, so that's a lot more than our traditional sandblasting cabinet. So 24 well, CFM. Yes, we're using okay. a bigger nozzle and a lot bigger hose. So it this does is consume a bigger it. hose. I can see that right three here. Three quarter inch airline and three quarter inch Chicago fittings. We're not going to use our, our quick disconnects. This because is the Chicago they, fittings here. They, uh, they basically restrict it too much. It needs a, a large volume of air. Okay. So to turn it on, all we're going to do is just turn the air on. Okay. Our pot's going to seal. Um, and then here we can adjust our pressure, much like your 2034. It's yep. Just pop it up, adjust it what you want. We're going to pre-adjust this one at just about three. So um, three bars. Yeah, three bar, which uh, actually three bar is going to be right around 45 pounds of pressure. Okay. Because a bar is about 15 pounds of uh, PSI. So if we go... If we go two bar, that would be right around 30. And if we go three bar, we're going to be right around 45 pounds. Okay. So um, three bar. Yep. And we're going to preset that. Now, keep in mind, we're going to set this for three, but we'll probably be running right around two, two and a half. Okay. This is what we're setting the machine at. And after it consumes all the air it needs, this is what's going to be our actual blasting pressure. Okay. So it drops a little bit as you get You to... lose a little bit because you have such a long hose and, right. uh, and, and travel for it. So you drop a little bit of pressure. Now it's on wheels. It is. It's on wheels. What's nice about this machine is you need about a 12 by 12 area, 10 okay. by 12 area. So you can work around. The actual blueprint is right around six by 12, um, but it comes on wheels. So this is the kind of the guts of the machine. This is your pressure pot, your dust collector, extractor, everything all in one. This is your pressure pot here. Yep, this okay. is your collection center and then your pressure pot is right down here below. Okay. And uh, again, this is gonna do everything for you. It's gonna pull all of your sand in. What's really nice is unlike some of the other machines that are out on the market, right. you can't, um, you don't have to do anything with this. When you start the machine, you walk away. So one of my favorite things about this machine is when it runs out of sand, Typically, you're right. going to run to your machine and you're going to stop it, pause it. Then you're going to go to the pressure pot, turn it off, depressurize it, fill the sand back in, right. repressurize, then go back and run it again. And finish where you started. Yep. Correct. Where you left off. This machine does it for you. So it stops. It's going to right down here. It stops when you run out of sand. Yeah, this, this right here, this little, wow. this little sensor is awesome. My finger is going to represent the sand today, okay? So... There's sand in the pot. So you have your light. Right. As I run out of sand, triggers light. it. Now what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna stop the machine. Okay. Depressurize, refill, recompress, and then pick up where it left off. So you can literally be away so from the So you can literally project. start the machine, walk away, go be productive, getting stuff right. ready to go back in the machine. You might hear it stop, don't worry about it, it's doing its own thing. Yeah. And when it's done, you can be rest assured that what you've programmed is finished. Smart machine. Yeah, it's really smart. It's a, it's a great, great machine. We looked at all, we have big traditional right. blasters. We looked at this machine and we realized that this is actually the machine of the future. So I know Very we, intuitive. we have this running and it produces, it blasts a lot of stone for A us. lot. We so run it not, uh, seven hours a day, five days a week. So flat granite, you're dealing with memorial markers. Um, bricks, bricks are the great. So for my raises customer, bricks, what else does it blast? So we brought the machine over right. from Europe and started selling them for the monument industry. And then quickly realized that this thing's way more versatile than that. Yeah. I think we have more machines out there 
in the brick industry or glass industry than we actually do in the monument so industry. So it can right do now. glass. Yes, it can. Okay. It can. Again, back to the sand. Right. We have that. We have that option of changing out the sand and running aluminum oxide or stone blast, which is zirconia. With a finer, finer grit. Or garnet, yeah, with a finer grit. Now, you don't want to go too fine a grit because the finer you go, the more you're going to lose to the dust collector. Right. So you want to stay coarse, but you can. If, you, if you're going to do shower doors or glass panels, this is a great, great option. The reason being is no matter how good of a blaster you are, and there's some really good ones out right. on the market, there's some good people that are really talented, they can't blast as consistent as a fixed pressure, fixed nozzle distance, and a fixed speed. All right, now um, we're using garnet. Do you want to start the machine or do we want to go over some of the different sands that they can use in this machine? Um, we can go over the sand. So um, kind of like what we just talked about there, uh, this is what we're using today, and that's an 80 grit garnet. So I'm gonna open this up because I think this is kind of great to see. This looks pretty coarse, guys. Pretty coarse, and it's hard. Uh, it does break down a little faster, but it's a really uh, economical option so for, for blasting this is stone. 80. This is 80. This is going to be 100 grit um, aluminum oxide. So and you're, grit? you're more uh, familiar with the aluminum right. oxide. Right, and this feels so much softer. So much softer. Compared to that garnet. It's not going to last as long. Um, it actually holds up better than the garnet, a little, little pricier. Holds up better, uh, but it does get dustier. Okay, and then you have some premium sands or premium medias. Um, this would be a center ball. Center and this ball. is what we use for stone. That's a 4070 blend. Almost really like smooth, spice. very heavy, very yeah. hard. Now you can feel, you can really feel the grain compared to the other two. Mm -hmm. This one, you can, it feels gritty. Now this one, this one is zirconia. So this one is probably the one most used in the stone business. Okay. And that's a 3660. So very coarse. Very coarse. That's going to last a long time. But on that one, you're going to be forced to use our monument material or people that are using rubber. Um, that you can run any one of those medias through this machine. So this one uh, would be your our monument film, our monument pre-glue yep. film, and then or like a, a rubber material. Yeah. Okay. So very coarse. Very coarse. Very a heavy. Lots of options. Going to last a long time. Going to blast really fast. Remember, the coarser the grit, the faster the blast. Okay. So uh, I wouldn't go below 100 grit. I w or above 100, above 100, I would stay right around 100. Okay, so let's see what we got here. I know we're gonna set up in just a moment here. Um, we have some questions. So we have, how big is the pot, pounds of abrasive? So how many pounds of abrasive will that pot hold? It'll hold two 50 pound bags at a time. Okay. So, so it's about 100 pounds. pounds. Uh, it'll hold slightly larger than that, but I always tell people, it's, you know, don't break open a third bag just to put a little bit in there. Just put two bags in. And again, the machine will actually tell you when to add sand. Oh, it doesn't wow. only change the sand, it'll get to the point where it's recycling the sand too often and the notification will come up on the screen and say, please add sand. So again, how great is that? It's really nice. Oh man, that is an awesome feature. It is, it's really nice. Instead of trying to tap the pod and try to remember how much, mm -hmm. you know, in case you might have a clog, you're like, oh, I need to add sand, but you really didn't. So this, that's a great feature. So some people in the, in the monument business say, well, why would you use such a small pot? Like, right. why wouldn't you use a traditional 300 pound pot? Right. Well, because we don't have to take the time to recycle the sand like you do with the with the other systems, oh. it really doesn't matter. So we were right. trying to go for something that's efficient, take up less space. Um, and again, because it's recirculating its sand on its own without us getting involved, if it does it two or three times in a, in a cycle of a stone, I don't really care because my guys are off doing something more productive. Right. So you're letting sand. the blaster do its job. Letting the machine do it, what it needs to do. All right. And we got Chuck and we have Antonio. And we have Andy joining us. So we have April, and um, good to have you guys. All right, so are you gonna show us how this works? Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and run it while the bricks are still All right, warm. I like so this little cart, so you can have a table, a cart. Multiple like. options. You could run a, a cart, you can have a fixed table if that's what you want. Um, we run conveyors, so you can run conveyors right through if you weren't going up against the wall. Okay. I think in all the machines that we have out on the market today, I think every single one of them is different. Some people use a cart, some people are using conveyors. Um, this machine's going to a location where they don't know what they're gonna use yet. Yes. They might use conveyors, they might end up using a cart. It's okay. really gonna end up being a personal preference. All right. So uh, one thing we wanna do before we get started, if you're running conveyors or using a cart, you wanna make sure everything is level. Okay. Um, so we've already leveled it. I don't know if we're square. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get my laser. I'm gonna go to set up a program. Um, 
and you'll first thing you'll notice is this this laser that comes on right that tells me it's looking for its first point but before i start to program it i want to make sure that my my uh my work area is square to the machine okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna run that laser along the top and if you notice i'm starting to drop down quite a bit right so what i'm gonna do is bring it all the way over to this inch edge and i'm going to rotate it go back up to the top and run back you'll notice now my machine is is all square to the to the surface okay okay if I left it crooked, that means we would have a, a crooked the, square. The pattern. Yeah, it wouldn't be right. Okay. So we want to make sure it's square. So now that we're square, my laser light's on. It's telling me it's looking for its first spot. What I want to do is make sure I'm about a half an inch up and a half an inch over. So if you notice, right, I'm good here, but down here, I got some, some of these letters that are running oh, to the edge. Hangover. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from this corner. Okay. And I think if, if everything fits inside there, I'm going to um, slow that machine down. And I'm going to make that my my first point now what are you how are you how are you moving that oh my gosh it looks like a gaming system here you know what easy um, right big yeah buttons. when we hey for those that need glasses big buttons here okay because because that works for me when i first <laughs> seen the machine they were using a ps2 controller and then we we're yes. like yeah that's that works really good but it's this is a little more professional yes. so uh, we're good here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to accept that i All like right. that so spot. you lasered your point you accept yep. it now look at that laser now it's flashing. Yep. Blinking. So that's telling me, hey, okay, I got point A. Where am I going to? So now I just basically want to run this over. And I want to make sure that everything is inside there. So I'm going to run just off of the edge of that. You can see that. And then I'm going to go straight down from there. And I have a speed controller, so I can speed it up and then slow it down just to make sure I don't overshoot my landing there. That's pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Okay. okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to bring my head down to where the bristles are just touching so the we, surface. We have the nozzle that sits in the right in the middle, correct? Yeah, it's right about right about four four and a half inches up. And what size nozzle That's is that? That's a quarter inch nozzle. A quarter inch nozzle. Yep. Okay. Quarter inch nozzle. So if you look at it, everything's good. My bristles are are running nice. So what I can do is I can leave the machine there. I'm going to come back to the controller and again everything we blast is a little bit different. On bricks, because they're softer and they blast pretty fast, my machine initially is set up for 80 speed, okay. but I know that I need to run that at 100 because we need to go as fast as we can uh, so we don't over blast the brick. And then you can program how many passes. You can, you? now what's nice is if you, what I'll do is I'll program this for four passes. Now, we're only gonna do it in one, Right. but I'll show you that when the machine's running on the fly, if I look and say, oh yeah, one pass is plenty, I can go back there while the machine is running and just change it to one. Okay. Okay. Uh, so once we do that, now what we're going to do is we have our head, our hide head, our head height set up. We know how many passes. We have the program in here. I'm just going to go back, and I want to go to my job. And if if we were to have it was stone that we had multiple fields in here, like maybe the last name and the first name, we'd have you would want to run all the fields. Okay. We only have one field to run, so we're still going to run all. So the field is what you just programmed. What we program now. To blast. Why would we have area. multiple fields? Again, if it was a stone, and it had a last name, that last name is generally deeper. So right. we want to have a separate field for that, so that it knows, hey, blast this one six passes, and blast everything else four or five. Okay. Now, Great. What's nice about that? The reason we have these set up here is if you look and the stones finish, and you came up and said, man, everything looks good, but that last name needs to be deeper. You can go back and pick field three or two and just run that one again one. instead of running the whole entire stone. It's like just programmed and it makes it easy for you just to press the button and let it go. Exactly. All right. So I believe this does get a little loud. It is going to get you loud. You want to have your operator wearing ear protection um, when you put one of these in your facilities. You ready to go? I'm ready to go. Okay. Look at that go. We do have a question as that's blasting. 
Um, we do have this on our website, and they're saying that it looks like it's two separate units, but this is all one piece. It's sold as one unit, but it's two separate pieces. Sold as one unit, but it, it is two separate pieces, but it's packaged together on our website. If you're looking at a leasing this, you're looking at around 600 um, a month, and that all depends on, on how much you finance. So we have Oklahoma City joining us. We have Annie joining us and Lane. We have Nancy joining us all the way from Baltimore. So open air system, Liz, you can walk right up to it. You don't feel any sand coming no, out? No, I don't. You don't see any dust? No. It looks pretty good, no cabinet. Who would ever thought, no blasting cabinet, mm -hmm. and, the, and it's etching very fast. You couldn't do that with your traditional sandblaster. No. Open the doors. And my mask is holding up. Nine mil's holding up pretty well. These are memorial bricks. Some of them are. Some of them are donors. Some of them are memorial. That one's for somebody that got married. They're all slightly different. So I like making the mask the same size as a brick, which mm -hmm. allows you to avoid taping very quick. When we're done, I'm going to have you look at the uh, the one with the flag. All 50 stars on a brick. That's, that's amazing. That's some good material, Liz. With uh, 80 grit garnet. With 80 grit garnet. Because the coarser the brick is, the faster you're going to finish. Yes. We're right at three minutes. Okay. I think we're going to finish right around five, which would put us at 30 seconds. Now, does the brush have to be, I mean, it, how do you know how close to make, to, for that brush to align to your surface? You just want them to be touching. Okay. Just the bristles to are touching. Just yeah. for the bristles to touch. Amazing. And it looks so clean. Okay, so we have this vacuum is working here. So it's pulling in all of the abrasive, the dust and debris. And, and look at it go, there it goes. So Liz, we were at four minutes and 20 seconds. For 10 bricks. For 10 bricks, that puts us well under the 30 second mark. Okay. Now, um, you Because know, we had, I mean, I think when I first saw, or he, Josh told me we have a customer that had a project for three to 4,000 bricks. And that's a lot of bricks and planted many months of blasting bricks. Bought one of these and you did a larger frame for him. Larger frame. And they, were, they had a masker that was just masking all of the frames. Mm -hmm. Brought it in, set it up, and then as this, this was done, rolled the card out and painted. And then they'd bring in a new frame filled with bricks. Yep. Great, great for production. Uh, sped things up. There's no way you could have manually blasted them that consistent and that fast. Um, again, every brick is different. They were using a soft clay brick, but we were, I think we were doing 10 or 12 bricks. So look at these fine lines right here in this little diamond. Very fine. You can actually see the aggregate from the, from the surface here. We have our little leaf here. The little flowers, the little leaf lines, all intact. This looks amazing. And our little anchor here. 
Looks great. So Pretty one good. pass. One pass. Um, that's right around 30 seconds. Again, if you wanted to go deeper, you very well could. You can see the mask was holding up just fine. Yes. Um, some people go deeper. Here's the thing I tell people with bricks. If the brick is going on the wall, okay. then it's okay to go with a nice deep edge. Right. Um, but if that brick's going in the ground, you want to be a surface edge, uh, just a deep enough to hold paint. And the reason why is over time, those bricks are going to fill up with dirt. And then when the sprinklers come on or it rains, that dirt gets wet, that turns into mud. The mud turns into clay. They become very hard to maintain and keep up. So anytime you see bricks that are out uh, on the ground in the open, you want a shallower etch just so that you can be sure that it's easy to maintain the, clean, the cleanliness. Right, and like I've, Disneyland, you see all their donor bricks all over and they're very, very shallow. Very shallow. So it's easy when they come across with brooms or, or, uh, or any kind of mopping system that it's easy to clean up. So we have some um, questions here. You can use vinyl. You can. You can use rubber. You can we use vinyl about rubber, or rubber. So you can use rubber. Um, the machine is versatile. You could use whatever masking system or stencil system that you're currently using, whether it's vinyl, rubber, photoresist film, whatever it is. Um, you could use whatever media. You, we went through different sands. Right. You, there really is a lot of options. You can control your pressure, your speeds. There's a lot of options on the machine. So which mask are we using today? It's the 9 mil. So if you're just joining us, um, 9 mil SR2000 is um, what we're using. And we, we have a question here on the brushes. Um, the brushes don't move the mask. So nope. you're right. So the brushes did not pull up the mask. As long as we apply the stencil properly, whether it's rubber or photoresist film or vinyl, if we do a proper job of installing, of uh, placing our mask, the, brussels, the bristle brushes won't ruin the stencil. Okay. Now, we do, we do have different bristles. We have firmer and softer ones. Oh. We run a softer one whenever okay. we're using photoresist film. Um, but we, we have different brushes that come with the machine. Okay, and then let's talk about the vacuum system because I know this is an amazing vacuum system. Uh -huh. um, we have, I have two switches here. So why don't you explain to this, so explain this uh, Everything that comes from the head, right? You have the nozzle and then you have your vacuum that's around the nozzle. Right. So it's blasting and there's actually a hose in there that protects the stream of the nozzle that comes down so okay. that your sand doesn't get sucked back up. Okay. okay, so it extracts everything, dust and abrasive. You can see how clean the, the stones oh, yeah. are. And we'll Absolutely. go back and you can see there's no abrasive left behind. It extracts, it comes through, this is your main hose. It's gonna okay. go into here, very similar to your, the vortex on your 2034, right? Yes. It's gonna go in, it creates a cyclone and it's gonna spin around. All that heavy abrasive falls back to the pressure pot. Okay. All of our light abrasive is gonna get sucked up through this hose. And it's almost like a three stage filter. This would be stage one, okay. okay? Drops all of our good sand down. It's gonna come into this hose, okay? And it goes into another vortex unit, all right? And that's gonna spin around and we're gonna get real fine powder that's gonna fall into here. And once a day, we're gonna empty that out or as needed. And that's your trash. And that's, that's all trash, you're not gonna reuse that. And that just slips on there. Then it, whatever's even finer than that is gonna go into our main cartridge dust collection system. Okay. Okay. That's back here. You got two powerful motors that are extracting all of that. That's what these switches are on. The reason we do this is have a switch here is because you can manually turn these on and off if you need to. Oh. But when the machine's running, we leave everything on because it will tell it when to turn on and off. Okay. So let me just, I want to make sure that I, I got it right because um, is, is this your trash area or is the area from the, from the tube? It's okay. two separate collection areas. Okay. So, and the reason we do that is it is very efficient. Okay. If we just had one, this is going to load up and need, require to be cleaned more often. By adding that sep that second stage in there, it's going to prolong the life of this dust, uh, this cartridge filter. So down here is where we're going to throw uh, anything in that drawer. You unscrew those three um, wing nuts and then Basically, that's all going to go in the trash. So two areas where it collects Two trash. areas of collection. So well, very three efficient. areas of collection, but two areas of trash collection. Okay. And then the, the first area is the, the abrasive that you're going to keep recycling and reusing. Okay, so 100 pounds of abrasive this holds. Mm -hmm. And the main thing about this, because the power is amazing, 110 volt. 110. That's crazy. But your air compressor, you need a powerful air, you need air compressor. A, you need something that puts and off a lot of CFM. And now we can see why. Yeah, you can see why. We've got right, a lot so of air moving here. Let's talk about painting. And okay. then I'm going to take a look at our, our questions here. So if you were operating production, you would roll this cart over to your paint booth. Yeah, I would set up, if it was me, I would probably have a couple of carts. 
Again, one thing that's nice about this cart is it, it's adjustable. Uh, one thing nice. we didn't talk about is the machine has nine inches of travel. So if you're bringing in a larger item, you can raise the head up. If you have something lower, you can drop it down. What's nice about this cart is this also has place. So it really gives us a lot of flexibility okay. with parts. You're not always going to be doing just bricks or you're not always going to be doing two and a half inch bricks. Maybe it's a one inch brick or a three inch brick. So you have adjustment with a, if you get a cart that adjusts and you also have adjustment on the head. So what's the widest, um, item that you can put in here at one time? It's 47 and a half, so almost 48 inches. Is your engraving area? By 50 inches. Okay. So it's, if you think about it, it's almost the exact same size as the largest custom mass that you can make. That's right, that's right. 42 by 52, uh, you're gonna be 47 by 50. So just a little bit larger than what you can get a custom mass made, you can get it in here. However, we have a lot of people, and we do this sometimes, if you have a, like a large ledger, ledger is a six foot long, by three right. foot wide stone. Right. So in that case, what we would do is we would bring it in, we would do half of it, okay. and then we would, because we have conveyors, we would roll that through and then continue on with the second half. If so you're using a it. cart, yeah, you would basically just bring it in, do half, turn it, or in some cases you might have a large uh, shower door, but only the bottom half is getting engraved. Well, again, leave that, the half that's not getting engraved out and then just put the, the side that is getting right. engraved in. Very nice, very informative. So, um, so you would you would recommend somebody in a shop just to pull this cart over to your painting booth. Now, traditionally, we have a an uh, very, um, I guess, kind of like a filter, industrial industrial thank paint you booth, yeah. paint booth. So, so I'm going to show a picture of what we have um, in our shop, so you can kind of see that and. It's, kind of look at talk talk to me about the filters that are on our paint so the reason we run that booth is because we have you have two different motors at the top that are extracting and we're painting five or six stones at a time so we roll those in and instead of painting one brick like your smaller unit we want to be able to paint multiple items at one time with good filtration right Today we're going to be using our paint booth that you see in my workshop all the time. So we're going to be using the paint booth. I'm going to pull a couple of these out. Real yes. quick, did you notice, Liz, how much sand is, is on here? Hardly anything. Yeah. That's just showing you how well that's it's extracting. Not, I mean, really, I can... If I was to do this in a traditional hand cabinet, you'd still have more dust than that. So it really does a good job of extracting the, um, the abrasive out. All right. So, so one thing I did on this one is I overlapped the mask just because there's a 16 inch gap between each brick. So they're kind of stuck together. So what I am gonna do is I'm just gonna slice this down just so I can take it over and remove it and um, in the uh, paint booth. Okay, okay. Does that work? That works. And I'm gonna do a, uh, you can explain it, but while I do it, I'm gonna do a clear coat first. Yes, so we have, um, if you watch some of our videos, when we deal with a porous surface, we like to put a clear coat. So the clear coat, what this does is it acts as a sealant and it, it protects your paint from bleeding. So That's if you have the worst. That, I know. Bleeding you, is the you worst. You did a good job blasting, and then all of a sudden you add the paint and it looks like you didn't know how to blast. So, so we have a hair dryer just to kind of speed it up. It dries really fast, both the, uh, the clear coat and the paint that we're gonna be using. And the paint we're using today is gonna be the same paint we would use in the monument industry which is a stone tone paint. I love it because it not only dries fast, but you don't have to use very much. It's, I think you've talked about this in a couple of your videos. And um, if you know Luis, my coworker, um, we both love this paint on glass, mm -hmm. ceramics and glass, because it's very durable. It's a stone paint, it's very durable, but it also dries very fast. And doesn't require a lot of paint. So you can see uh, the need for an industrial setup for painting if you're doing thousands of bricks or hundreds of bricks. You would just keep that, keep them all up in one area and then just apply your spray paint. So when, while you're drying that, let me just show you what else. Now for those of you that use our laser mask, so what is laser mask? Let me explain to those who don't, are not familiar with it. Laser mask is this incredible film that no exposure, no washout, and you would apply laser mask to your surface, put it in your laser, and the laser would burn out your design, and then you sandblast it. 
But what we've made, we made a special film for some of, some of our customers that use lasers that do bricks only. And this laser mask is actually very durable, it's a little thicker, but it, the main thing about it is it's glue. It is, has a heavy coating of glue, and this glue is extremely tacky. So what we've done is you can put out multiple bricks, and then you can bring over the laser mask, and you can apply it, and then you can squeegee this down. I don't have a squeegee on hand right now, but you could squeegee it down, and then you can, you can just use your little blade, cut it, So you would just squeegee this. And this is for my laser engravers that are doing bricks. That's such a wide piece too. Yes, so just like your frame, a lot of my customers are putting multiple bricks and then they're using a roller and just pulling out the laser mask and then just plain applying it. That's gonna you, speed up production for sure. And then you sure. can just cut this down and then you, once you cut it down, there is a clear carrier that, that will peel away, just like you see here. And now this brick is ready to go to your laser, laser it, and then you sandblast it, then paint it. But what's key here is how thick and how, how much of, uh, adhesive. It's a very mm -hmm. uh, aggressive layer of adhesive. And you can use your roller, again, your rubber roller, just to apply and just make sure that's secure to your surface. All right, so what so do we have? This brick's dry, and you're gonna see one thing I love about the material, it just cleans up so well. So that mask is gonna peel off in one piece, uh, and then if you have you a razor always... blade, yeah, I'll just take and basically clean those off. And this is a very, very poor stone, and if you look for how porous it is, the detail's great. A lot of holes, a lot of divots, mask held, you can read it really nice. And again, if you look at the depth, we're probably, I don't know, right around a 16th, a little over 16th deep. What's nice about that is if this goes in the ground and gets collected, it's gonna be very easy to clean up. Because it's not, it's, there's it's no not too deep, right. it's not gonna get loaded with, with dirt. So one really pass. nice. One pass. One pass. One pass on the auto blaster, 30 seconds or less. Or it was thir under 30. 30 seconds. We were at four minutes and 20 seconds for 10 bricks. So right. that's, ju that's gonna be, you know, well under. So uh, you need to think about it. Are you, do you do bricks? What are you doing? How many bricks are you doing? Because if you're doing what, 20 bricks? I mean, that's a lot of bricks to be doing hand blasting. So we want to make sure that we, we kind of um, put this out for people to think about when you start doing bricks, there's a better way to do it. It's more efficient. It's a CNC auto blaster. It's more efficient and it's not just bricks. You can, keep, you can use your glass panels. It's really easy to change the media if you had to. If you had to change your stand, that's possible. Uh, but anything, any kind of large format or high production pieces is what you would want to use this for. So we have some questions here. What clear coat are you using? So maybe you can pull that yeah. over. This one, again, is just something you're going to get at like Lowe's or Home Depot or Menards. Yes. And it's a real simple Rust-Oleum. I like the matte finish because okay. it dries faster than the gloss. Um, and it's, it's fairly inexpensive and it works really well. We have Sue joining us from Colorado. Good morning. And we have Fred from, I believe, New Jersey. How and many hours in a shift a day can you run the machine? Right now, we run four tens, right? Four tens, right. And so our machine with a 10 hour day, that machine's probably running seven or eight hours with breaks and lunch and everything okay. else. Uh, and then that runs um, five days a week because we stagger our shifts. So we're running it about seven hours a day, two machines. And believe it or not, in two years and that much blasting, we've yet to change our filter. Oh, wow. And so that two that, stage I mean, process really extends the life of the filter. So do you, what kind of maintenance? Let's talk about maintenance on this. Um, your biggest part that's going to wear out the fastest is this right here. Okay. Because that, that sand gets extracted and hits that elbow. Okay. So this will blow. It'll not, it doesn't blow up, but it, it'll, I mean, it's, it'll, it's it'll wear out. Yeah. And so it'll wear down. You change that again. That's just an inch and a half, um, pipe fitting. Okay. Really easy to replace. And do we offer replacement parts? We do. Okay. We sell all the replacement parts um, for the machine. How often do you change out a nozzle? Uh, it because depends on how you're using coarse grit. It's it's really it's really depending upon the media that you're using. If you're using aluminum oxide or garnet, you're going to notice that that nozzle is going to last a lot longer. 
So you might get a year, a year and a half out of that nozzle, whereas we might only get about six or eight months out of a nozzle because we're using either the stone blast or the center ball, depending on what we're doing. So okay. um, that's a big nozzle, easy to replace. Everything is easy um, to replace. We have it all and it's all hand tight. We don't use big tools and wrenches. It's real, it's real so simple. So I noticed we have some holes here. I know we um, on our, the foot of this auto blaster. So how would this normally set up in your shop? Two options. You can put, uh, there's leveling feet that come with it. We just haven't installed them on this machine right. um, that help to level the machine. And it also, I don't know if you noticed, but the machine was jerking around because it's you just really sitting on the concrete. Much, okay. um, that kind of absorbs the shock. You can also bolt it down. Uh, if it's going to be in its permanent home, bolt it down. If you don't know where you're going to put it or you want to be able to move it later, then don't bolt it down. Just leave it on the rubber feet. What about putting uh, casters, like rolling ca locking casters on it? I wouldn't put casters on okay. it for the fact that when it moves back and forth, you do not want the machine to be able to move. It needs to stay firm or you're going to end up with travel where the, where the head starts to travel away from the design. Okay, so no very casters. Important. Just right. casters on that, which makes it easy if you're going to move it around to clean. And right. again, but this isn't that heavy. This sorry, isn't that yeah. heavy, but this could be set up wherever you want it. That could be set up on the back side of the machine. Uh, we prefer it on the right side of the machine right. because your controller is on the left, but we can move it around any way you want. Amazing. Now, let me know if you have questions. We have a little bit of time here. Um, I have one question for Josh. And the question is, if you blast bricks and we change out the abrasive, is it safe to blast glass right after? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Now, anytime you change your abrasive, you still have leftover abrasive in the line right now. And you know this from your, yes. your cabinet. Right. There's always amount of, of sand or media that's left in the hose that's not under pressure. Right, it's a 10 foot hose in, my, in our blasting cabinet. Right. So what I tell people is when you change, if you're going from a, a, a coarse grit for doing stone and brick and you want to do a piece of glass and you want to change your sand, change it out, your sand, and then run the machine on a sample uh, stone or glass for about a minute or two just to clear the line. Okay. After that, you're good. Okay, that's great because you can go from glass to stone. We do or it. Stone we, to change glass. The, we change medias quite often yeah. depending on what we're doing. And is it easy to change the media? Very easy. Okay. Um, basically, at the union down here, we're basically going to take this union off. Okay. Okay. Yep, I know. And that's that going to drop all of our sand down. And it falls to the platform. Once it's on the platform, you can scoop it up, put it in a bucket. Once it's emptied, we're going to put that union back on and then refill the sand. Amazing. Very simple. And then I have a question here because I'm looking at this. Where do I put sand in the pot? Good question. Sand is put up from the top. So oh, okay. because right this is it's what they call hermetic, okay. Okay? meaning everything is under pressure, this is locked on. When it right. refills, it refills under pressure. That's why when it does run out of sand, it takes like 15 to 20 seconds to replace because it's done under pressure. So what we okay. have to do is take these off, mm -hmm. remove the top, and then put our sand right in. Very in easy. So you mm -hmm. can actually see how much sand you yep. have in there. See, and then when you, I, we didn't cover this yesterday, but when you depressurize, yes. you're basically going to turn this off. Okay. That turns off. the machine off to drain the air out of the system so it's not under pressure. We're going to give it a manual pulse clean on the on the um, air filter, okay. yep, or the dust filter, and that's basically going to drain the machine out. That's so now, it. yep, now there's no more there's no more air in the machine. It's depressurized. It's off, and we left with a nice clean filter. Easy. So, for my for my monument customers, this is something you've already been doing auto blasting. Mm -hmm. You're already blasting deep you're, you're blasting with garnet you're blasting with stone blast. stone blast so now take a look at this auto blaster because it's really going to change the way that you do production i mean you just set it up and then you walk away now with our photo resist you can offer detailed images and this is what's great for you because you're using vinyl you're using rubber but now you can move on to photo resist. You don't have to use it every single time, but you can use it when you have those detailed images. What does that mean for a monument blaster, blasting detailed images? It means more, more money. More money. More money. And more it money. gives you more options for your customers. So that's what we need, right? You need to separate yourself from your client, from your other competitors, because you need to offer better product, quality product. We have a lot of customers. I was telling you just yesterday, um, 
the, the last guy that bought one of these in yeah. Texas, he's using vinyl. Uh, but he called yesterday and said, hey, listen, I've got a big project. It's like six foot by three foot. I'm going to have to do it in multiple pieces. And I don't want to have to do strips of vinyl because his plotter cuts, you know, 14 or 17 inches. Right. So I said, well, we can do custom mask and make it in one piece or two pieces or whatever it needs to be. Yeah. And that's an option. You don't have to completely, you know, change, but at least you give yourself options to do things in the future for more detail right. and it makes you more versatile. And then he's, what? what is he blasting? What stone is he he's blasting? He's blasting limestone, a limestone. Texas limestone that they're, they're harvesting right there in Texas. Um, so what's nice about that is that's a, uh, a limestone that's really soft. It's kind of like um, sandstone or flagstone. Right. It's a really soft uh, rock and he uses that. Now he has a five horse air compressor. Okay. A okay. beautiful top of the line air compressor. However, the drawback is he can only get his pressure up to about 35 or 40 PSI because the amount of air it consumes. So that's why I say you really want to invest in a good air compressor to make sure you can utilize the machine at 30 PSI or 80 or 90 PSI. And we blasted today, was it 45? We blasted at two, P, uh, two, two bar, bar, which is at right around 30 PSI. We could have turned okay. it up a little bit more. You can see the mask yes. would have taken it. Right. You know, you have confidence in that material. Yep. It can take it. Uh, but we, we, we were right around 28, 30 PSI. So I am going to say, um, I know we have a couple more questions, but send in your questions. Um, Josh here, he knows these systems inside and out. He actually went to Europe and you got trained on these. We did. So we, we a lot of people that know Honor Life know that we have um, a monument shop, right? Mm -hmm. And we have a traditional big box blaster. Right. Well, when we needed a new machine, we started looking and all we found was that every machine on the market was the exact same. You want the black one, the gray one, the red one, but they're all the exact same machine. Right. They start from here and they blast here and, and everything huge. in between. They're and they're huge. huge and they take a lot of power. Well, dad found this one. We went over to Norway to take a look at them. And after, literally after the day of being in Norway and looking at all these machines, we had ordered two. And a day after they installed them here in the U.S., we signed an agreement to be the exclusive distributor because we realized this is different. Right. It's it's different. It's more intuitive. It's smarter. It's more uh, it's more energy efficient. It's just everything that you want in a machine. And it's quality, and that's what we do here at Raises. We are a manufacturer, so we understand quality. As you know, our systems are epoxy powder coated inside and out. That's one step that we do that no one else does. And why is that? Because it's the highest form of treatment for metal. But looking at these, we understand quality, and this right here, you can see this system, it's clean, it's efficient, and you can have an even blast, a large area. You don't have to worry about uneven blasting because what happens when you're blasting a large stone by hand? Your blaster can get tired. He's great over here on this top part, but then maybe down at the end when he's blasting this huge stone, he's, he's tired, and he's not doing as an efficient job towards the end of that stone as he did it at the beginning. So this is something that's going to change your production when you're dealing with um, donor recognition projects. Couple really good questions on here. Um, does the paint not stick to the blue film when you peel it out? If you blast it deep enough and you don't over paint, the paint will not stick to the blue mask. Now, if you go to way too heavy uh, and that paint dries, it will bond and when you peel it out, you will have that happen. So if you use a good quality stone paint, you don't have to do as many uh, coats and layers, which will eliminate the paint from sticking. And then a really good question is, uh, could you not just have an extra volume tank? You very well could. But my customer in Texas, they're running two 60 gallon tanks in addition to that five horse. But again, it's just the amount of volume of air that's using that compressor is constantly running to try and keep up. Um, here at our shop, we run a 50 horse air compressor with a 600 gallon tank, but that's for multiple departments, right? right? And so we don't have an issue. So not that you have to go that large, but again, probably in that 10 horse range and a storage tank to hold a volume of air is always beneficial. That's gonna extend the life of your air compressor for sure. All right, a lot of information. So being that he goes out to Europe and he, they went and they sought after this machine and they drilled the manufacturer on mm -hmm. this, I know that. We went round and round. Round, so he does the training. So when you buy one of these systems, you get Josh for two days? You get me for about day and a half, two days, day I come in, days. We spend about a half a day setting it up. That's how easy it is. And then we spend the next half of the day playing with the machine and getting yeah. it dialed in. And the next day we're running stones. 
if I come out there and we're not running stones, then we got a problem. Right. So before I leave anybody's shop, we have production stones that have already ran through the machine or done. And I ensure to walk you through that and make right. sure I don't just set it up and leave, but we set it up, we run production, uh, and you're running production or your guys are running production before I leave your building. So that's one thing I've had great comments um, on this machine and with Josh's training because, you know, what is it, if, if he didn't know what he was doing, we sent him out there, I mean, what, what good does that do you? But he makes sure that you are up and running when he leaves your shop, that that's you know included how to in work the price. It. It's included in the price, guys. All right, so we have Donnie joining us and it looks like we have Michael and Jeff. From India, and, wow. Oh, we have, what is that? Kiwal? Kiwal. Kiwal from, from India. India. Welcome. And as always, you guys, we have our dealers. So if you're outside of the country, we have um, Arn Art from South America. He's located in Peru. And we have Germany. We have um, Europe. We have Matthias from Abrasive Imaging. We have U United Kingdom, the Glass Scribe. Scribe Carl, and Adam. Carl and Adam. We have the Glass Tattoo, Netherlands. Uh, we have Jeff out in Australia and New Zealand. So we have very good, and I know I'm missing a few, but we have very good dealers out there. And good they are good coverage, but they're quality people and they care about you. We support them, we support you. So you let us know when you have questions, when you're, if you're thinking about it, we can send you a quote on this system and we'll make sure Josh comes along. So you yep. get that training. Absolutely. So you let us know um, what you have and, and just shoot us some questions. We, this is Tuesday, this is 12 sessions, guys, 12. I thought it was supposed to be fast today. Hey, I'm under time. I have three minutes and I'm, I'm under time. So usually I go over an hour and we, we did it in under an hour. Well, thanks for having me again, Liz. Thank you. I'm gonna sign off, but it was really good being with you again and uh, look right. forward to what we do in the future. Sounds great. So we'll see you next week. I've been asked to do, can we do wood? Sure, we can do wood. I've been thinking about wood, wood products. Um, we can also do, we're gonna focus on a little more on painting, hand painting, um, adding jewels to your bottles. So there's a lot we still have to cover. So we'll see you next week, Tuesday at 10 o'clock.